Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm here with PJ Gallagher out in Dunleary Lifeboat Centre. Is that what it's called? Lifeboat Station, yeah. Lifeboat Station. Pretty close, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. as you can see, we're surrounded by uh, what looks like fire brigade uniforms. Yeah, yeah. It looks almost like a, like a team change room, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one wears yellow in League of Ireland, surely not. We don't have any sort of canary, like no. Norwich style teams, no. no. Watford, no. isn't <laughs> Yeah, no. not exactly. But uh, I, I'm here joined with PJ, basically Matt O'Neill has announced his 30-man provisional squad for the friendly against Turkey in a couple of weeks. Uh, and there's a lot of new faces, fresh faces, but the main one, uh, back in the squad, our captain and leader, Seamus Coleman, is back. Yeah. Are you uh, as happy as me? Well, yeah, you have to be happy. <laughs> I mean, as fair as that was like one of those injuries you kind of look at, it was so kind of horrific, it was one of those... Not will he ever play football again. It was like will he ever be able to even walk to the shop again? Like it was yeah, pretty I, horrendous. I think his career was it was it was in doubt at one at one point. Yeah, it would have to have been yeah because it was it was horrific. Like so, it's actually kind of I suppose almost a quick turnaround if you could say such a thing. Yeah, from something that bad. So it's good to see him back. And then his mate, good James McCarthy, goes and does the same injury Just now. He's out for probably the same amount of time. I know. Until yeah. Next season, would you, he'd be a big loss for us as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, we do that really well, don't we? Like we, you know, you know, we're we're a great team to lose sort of vital players at vital time. I know we're not play, playing like a proper competitive game now for, is it till twenty nineteen? I, I don't think it's September. Think, yeah. yeah, so it's a long way away. But uh, but still, you still want to do well. And, like I mean, the Nations Cup and all that. I I've to be honest, I watched a YouTube video on how that works about six times, and I still yeah, haven't. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still quite confused. It's so. algebra to me, to be honest with you. It's <laughs> like I know how numbers work. Why are you confused now? By yeah. putting all these stupid letters in there, yeah, so, exactly. So whatever, but still, you you want to get out and support your national team, and you want to see your captain back out. You want to see good players back in in the mix. So it's great to see him out there. Yeah, yeah of course. And although uh, like we do have a lot of. Um, new blood coming in. It, it's it's kind of strange in a way to see the likes of John O'Shea and that not un, not in the squad anymore. John O'Shea, Wes Hoolahan, Daryl Murphy, Glenn Whelan, even not even in the squad. Yeah, no. What to Wes Hoolahan now? I know, like he's Dunphy's sort of wet dream in a way and all of that. Like he's never going to stop crying over the whole thing that Wes is gone and everything. But you know, Wes, he decided it was his time to go, and I I think he will be a loss. But at the same time, he wasn't the player he was. He, he probably pulled the pin at the right time. Yeah. He probably did pull the pin at the right time. But to time. be fair, he wasn't even starting games. He was just coming off the bench a lot for us. Yeah, I know, yeah. And even and, an, an orange, he wasn't getting his game either. So, like, you're not going to game there. Yeah, to go to national or international duty. Exactly, yeah. Starting, when you're competing yeah. with other players that are playing in the Premier League. Yeah. And the other players that are starting for, for championship teams. And there's a lot to be said for the bigger man walks away when he's supposed to. Like, he's walked away an, an absolute legend. Like, I mean, yeah. some of the testimonies you've seen coming out of Shelbourne and all the ex clubs he played and stuff, it was it feels like it's the right time. But yeah, like like you're saying, like the likes of him, Wes Houlihan and John O'Shea and all those names, you, you do Walters. miss them because they're, you're so used to seeing them there. You know, they've become yeah. part of the, the big green family. But that's it, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. So now I see this team sheet, and to be honest, there is just three names three four maybe names that I'm kind of like I have no idea yeah it's probably the Blackburn that. lads uh, Lenehan and Williams uh, I'm not too sure, sure of myself to def defend this um, yeah, so I guess it's you know we'll, we'll, we'll live and learn now is the time to try them no competitive no proper competitive games for points or qualifiers for Euros or World Cups for a yeah. long time to come so now is the time to really put lads out there and they yeah, well, have a great chance for them to show their award. It's nice to see because we, like, we have a lot of fullbacks like Matt Doherty he's top of the table now with champ er, top of the championship sorry with Wolves then we have uh, Ennis Stevens who's flying for Sheffield United and you have Greg Cunningham who's part of the trio um, in the squad or sorry there's Ford uh, Daryl Horgan as well but uh, they're flying in, in the championship now Daryl Horgan not so much but uh, Sean McGuire's after coming back the last two games I think he's three goals in two games now and he's won he's won the game in the last uh, two games yeah, he's, yeah. And he's only back from injury after four months out hamstring injury uh, Scott Hogan's yeah, we love our injuries we love, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott Hogan's banging them in from Villa uh, Shane Long is 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 Shane Long, um, but yeah, but the nicest fella probably on the whole squad, given the lad is Jews. Do you know what I mean? I was I was saying it to you earlier on. Like he's the I hate saying bad things about Shane Long. I think Shane Long is just like he's such a nice character and such a great person in the squad. Yeah. I know it doesn't amount to, to goals. You somewhere. don't get goals by being the the soundest lad anyone knows. Yeah, uh, and I hate not seeing him in a starting eleven. It just doesn't feel right that he's not in the starting eleven. Yeah. But the goal drought has been so long. And like even, what were you saying? The last goal you remember was gone was before. I, it was Christmas. around Christmas before Christmas. I can't remember for Southampton anyway. And you start thinking, right? 
it's probably time to give someone else a run, a, yeah. a run and like you like you're saying that we do there is players there you know that, that yeah. can take the place well, Murphy Daryl Murphy got in ahead of him um, but I think it's more so because of his figure and we needed someone to hold the ball up at the time uh, obviously against um, Wales and Denmark in our last games we played but now he's at the retirement um, so Hogan could be that man who holds the ball up alongside Maguire or Long because Long is obviously the one that makes the runs and stuff like that so you're gonna so that, I think that will open up the space for Maguire yeah. to run at people because as uh, I think I've mentioned to you earlier He's the first player I've seen in a long time that's not afraid to run at the ball and can fi- or run at defenders with the ball and can finish. And has a finishing touch, yeah, yeah. Because that's been missing for a long time. Like a proper long time. Like you were saying, the, the Robbie Keane. Robbie Keane was the last man who was... Prolific, really. When, if you're in defence and he gets a ball, you shit yourself. And yeah. you need that. The Ireland haven't had that in a long time. And like and you have now, Maguire is he's bringing that with him, you know. So that's the thing. Like When you have someone like Long who's... You know, he has had his chance and he's been brilliant when he's been brilliant and then that drought hits and you wonder, is that playing games with his head now, you know? Does he yeah. get the ball and think, he, does he not believe in himself anymore? And then you have someone like McGuire, he's always going to get that, that position and hopefully he does turn into it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I hate saying that, you know what I hate doing? I hate people to go, the next Robbie Keane, the yeah. next Liam Brown. I hate all that. Hopefully he's the next player. McGuire and he's yeah. himself and he's brilliant as he can be and he does it for Ireland, you know? That, and he has a yeah. chance to make himself. Um, have you seen much of Declan Royce this season for West Ham? No, I haven't. Half. Half. Not, not really. No, he's only honest. 18 and he's been starting games um, for most of the season for West Ham and uh, he's flying and there was a lot of talk from kind of will he go to England, represent England, will he come to Ireland? Now he's in the squad now. Hopefully that'll turn his head because it's still not a competitive yeah, uh, yeah. fixture, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> if he gets in the squad amongst the team, hopefully that'll, that'll sway him and then he'll, he'll stay with us then. Because I mean Duffy, I'm not I'm not sold on Kieran Clark, but Shane Duffy, he's quite solid. I don't see him being taken out of the team. But between Royce and maybe Kevin Long at Burnley, who seems to have come back in to the Burnley uh, squad, and he's done quite well. So between Royce and Long, I'd like to see one of them at least partner Duffy. You know, going forward in competitive yeah, yeah. games, I'd probably give Long and 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 um, Royce a run at centre half just against the Turks just to see what they're like, and maybe give. The, some of the lads like uh, Enda Stevens are running at left back or Greg Cunningham uh, Preston at left back and maybe Matt Doherty are running at right back and uh, yeah. it's a whole new back four then you know yeah, and, yeah. And, and Rob Elliott in, of Newcastle and goals is in the squad and he's probably our best keeper but defensively it looks like a good squad like defensively you wouldn't really pick too many holes in it it's yeah. always the Irish problem like we're not bad at keeping out you know opposition teams it's just the finishing on the other end that's the real worrying thing but yeah. I would wonder why Randolph's not in the squad at yeah, all Stephen Ward's not and, there either. and I haven't heard anything about injuries or he just doesn't seem to be yeah, I, there I'm not too sure myself which is kind of unusual because you do look at that you know that, that defence and you think that's a pretty good solid lineup, and, and it's glaringly obvious that Randolph's not there and fair play like Westwood still still sitting in, the, in that position around, there yeah. for ages and they're putting in the time and you know never gets a look in in fairness to him but you like if he's there and Randolph's not you're going to wonder what's going on Yeah. Uh, especially when you're, you're trying to build up your strongest defence which that sort of that starting you know be interesting. It, it looks like he is trying to put together a good defensive side so yeah be interesting to see now if he, if he starts uh, or plays uh, young Kieran O'Hara plays, he's a young underage keeper from Manchester United uh, I haven't seen much of him to be honest myself so I don't know what he's like but it'd be interesting to see if he gives him a run or not yeah. like at least it's if hard to know keepers though isn't it yeah like, I mean, it's hard you to know you see so little play you know so you like you, even if you, you hear about keepers and then you, you, you know they make one mistake and you're like, ah, he's a gobshite and yeah. it's so unfair because they, like you watch a game of football you can watch runs you can watch people make and play all these things that keepers just can't do so it's really hard to judge I guess the only way to know with these three lads, without any of them being round off, just put them in the sticks and hope for yeah. the best. Well, we, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. It'd be interesting because you never know what Martin O'Neill He always seems to pull a surprise out of the hat anyway. And if it's a friendly, he might show half of them in for one half and half of them in for the other. Yeah, I don't know if he can still do that anymore. a journalist at the end. <laughs> All goes to it. So. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what's going on. But then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You'll be next. That's yeah, you'll be next. <laughs> um, but just in terms of we did you, you, you mentioned Judge there obviously with Alan Judge in the in the squad now at Brentford and he had been out for a year and a half with a horrific injury and we have Liam Kelly there and they seem to be the players that can fill the gap for Wes Hulham so there's, there is players coming into the squad that are playing they, they well I'd say Kelly's young enough and um, George is, is, is I think he's over he's, he's over the kind of 24 mark anyway yeah, in yeah. the age I'm almost certain, if not, I'll let it out. <laughs> but um, yeah. uh, then, and then Liam Kelly, who are both 
uh, George is slowly coming back, but Liam Kelly's been doing quite well in the Championship this season. Uh, with Reading, he's playing. Yeah. But there's a lot of solid players now. It's like you, you hear a lot of criticism about the Irish team, like you know, from just neutrals kind of going, "Nah, shut at all." There's no Premier League players, and you know, yeah, yeah. But I suppose people who maybe remember when half of the Irish team were all playing for Aston Villa. Uh, yeah. But you know, it, it's it underrates what's the the quality of play that's in the championship. And then when you look at the players that we have in the championship and how they're playing on the on the high end of it, like players there in Wolverhampton who are guaranteed going to win it, I think, on the way yeah, through. And, and the Preston lads are, are pushing right into and Preston's pushing spot. straight through. And we've got a few players there as well. You kind Villa, of who are him as well. Yeah, so you kind of have to. I think you kind of look at the championship and just don't underestimate it as the league it is. And then you can't underestimate what these Irish players are bringing to it. You know. It's all very well to say there's a goal for difference here, but you know, th- th- they could probably hold their weight in any team. A lot of these lads, and like you said, some of them are young. You have an eighteen-year-old goalkeeper. Is that what you said? There yeah. from Manchester United, they're young players. You know, uh, okay, uh, twenty-four isn't young. Grant, Grant is. I get you that, but it's not old either. Yeah. And it's all, and all, I guess, four years to the next World Cup. Yeah, yeah. And the point I'm trying to make is, it is a, it's a high standard of football. It's a very high standard of football, and those players are playing very well in it. So. I don't know, they've the measure of the torques by any stretch. You'd, yeah. you'd have to imagine the measure of a lot of teams out there. You kind of, I don't know, maybe in a way, you know, it's maybe not bad for not in the World Cup. Yeah, well, it gives a chance for, for a lot of new blood to come in and, ch- and see how they get on. Yeah, because I mean, it's in transition. Like, there's a serious transition going on there. So. Yeah, but at the same time, you think about it, if by the time, if, if some of our players get promoted with, with these clubs, by the time the, the competitive fixes come around, they'll be playing a little bit of Premier League football by that point yeah anyway, yeah so. yeah yeah, for sure yeah and a bit more experience goes into them and you know a couple of extra years does no one any harm so I so, you know it's very easy to piss all over the Irish team it really is yeah. it's very easy to piss all over I'm, I'm actually quite but positive about you'd it you'd have to be you'd have to look at that and be positive enough and the fact that there's names in there that you don't know and they're in with those players it's, yeah. it's a good thing like. yeah well um, well, that, that's been it with the with, with the with the Orleans stuff and I just wanted to kind of touch over Bowls, you have yeah. a season ticket with, with Bohemians this year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, how's that going for you? I think it's I've one of the best things I've done in a very long time. You know, I like uh, I'm I, like I'm a, a sports fan through and through, regardless. Like I've motorbike racing is me thing I've done for myself for years, and I just got old and didn't want to be hurt anymore, so that's gone. Uh, and I've always been a Hill Sixteen season ticket holder, and it was Eric Lawler actually. He got me. Uh, He's been at me to go to Bowls games for years, and then shout out to Eric. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, Eric. Yeah, quality comic and Bowls fan, uh, and he got me to do a gig for Bohemians Youth in Daly Mill Park in the Phoenix Bar there. Okay. Uh, so I went along uh, purely because Eric asked me. Now at this stage, there was no affiliation, affiliation or, or nothing at all, and except for the fact I have I had a mate of mine, Morgan, whose brother played for Bowls way back in the day, so we were threatening to go. It sounds terrible to threaten to go to to watch proper matches in the League of Ireland games for two or three years, but got the bullshit in our heads that it wasn't a good league. Yeah. How ashamed of that I am now. Like, honest to God, I've been watching Manchester United since I was that high and never went down the road to watch Bohemians. I just feel like an idiot now. And uh, then I know you're getting there now, so. Get yeah, eventually, eventually never. yeah, 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 I know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so I went down, did that gig, and I had such a, just a, such a great time with the fans and with the people that were there and I had just a great night out one of those few nights when I, like I'm doing gigs 21 years it's very rare you do a gig and you actually want to hang around after it yeah. and uh, just got totally sucked up on the whole thing and then bought a season ticket I think about a week later and uh, I've just been dying to go to the season I've been studying and reading everything Bohemians and uh, ever since and you got and shirts as well didn't you at your last they gig came, they came to my gig so it's not that's some, that's League of Ireland for you they come to your shows you don't have to just go to theirs so they yeah, came yeah. and they gave me a jersey at my show I guess for doing the show for the gig for them and uh, they yeah. gave us a shirt for the studio as well so Deirdre yeah fair play yeah, thanks Daniel for the jersey Thank I appreciate you. it <laughs> uh, so it was uh, so it's been brilliant then I went to the Shamrock Rovers thing and what a game to go to yeah, yeah I actually met you at that game for the first time man. Yeah. Jesus Christ and I have to say I, I called on the day I met you you were in the queue for the toilet and you were saying oh, it's not looking good uh, yeah, it wasn't yeah, looking yeah, good wasn't but I was had a terrible first half it was basically like the worst game of heads and volleys I've ever seen it was like <laughs> keep the ball off the ground no matter yeah, what it was like we're, getting, yeah, yeah, like we're getting points for keeping it in the air and uh, just before the half, they looked like they were shit hot. They were getting there. Like halftime came at the yeah, wrong time. Yeah, the momentum. And uh, I don't know, Kevin's goal was just unbelievable. Talk about an atmosphere. Like, I've been going to sporting events my entire life. I've been there watching Dubs in all Ireland. So I've seen MotoGPs in Italy. I've seen all of that. I went to see United and Real Madrid and saw the old Ronaldo, fat Ronaldo, score yeah. a hat trick. 
Yeah, and, and hey, you're real Ronaldo. Hey, yeah, not fat Ronaldo, it's terrible. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, uh, that atmosphere there that night was one of the most um, top three sporting atmosphere like yeah, it was fantastic, I've, ever, so. I've ever seen. It was unbelievable, just blew me away. Uh, so I uh, went to Derry and of course the atmosphere wasn't that great because the beat ball was 1-0 but um, yeah. uh, so now I'm just getting stuck in that season ticket is going to be worn out by the end of the year worn out I can't wait to get yeah, you, 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 I was at the game against Derry as well you were brought out at half time and uh, yeah, talking. they seemed to have got a very good reception they seemed yeah, to have, have warmed to you a lot I think. all those fans yeah, they seem to yeah, 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 they seem to be just yeah, really sound to put, sort of taking me in as one of their own so I hope that's, that lasts I think you've got hounding for selfies and straight away after yeah yeah well, just wear a couple of lads yeah most people just whatever leave, yeah leave me yeah. alone uh, but a few yeah, Eric few, the, drag you yeah, away. a few of the young <laughs> ones were yeah and it was gas because I went there and because uh, I grew up just around the corner like in Marino there so well not just around the corner but not too far away yeah and uh, the amount of people I've met at the Derry game, not the first night, but at the Derry game, who I hadn't seen for years, lads I grew up with, lads I knew, I was like, why have I not been here? Yeah. And why didn't you just tell me? This is a, this is like one of the best things you can do, and you just kept it a secret, it felt so, yeah. So and there were times to come for all that time. Probably right? were, and I was like, I'm going to watch the Liverpool United, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I met so many people I grew up with and knew, and I was like, I am never... Friday nights will never be the same again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So hopefully now Ginny Cochran's injuries don't plague him, and he gets back out and has a has a better year. And you know, yeah, and Ginny's a good man. Oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, been on the show as well. Yeah, he's sound and like just seeing spot. He's great striker. Jesus, like I mean, hopefully he, he just has the niggles now at the start of the season. Yeah. Uh, hopefully now. Told me not to back him for a while. First goal scorer. Did he? Yeah, he's yeah. Well, I'm backing you. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> uh, so St. Pat's now on Friday, and uh, are you going to the game yourself? I can't. I can't go this time. I I'm, unfortunately, because March is a busy month, the next game I'm going to get into on Daily Mount will be the Bray game near the end of the month. Okay. So that's the next game I'll get into. So I'm going to miss Pats and I'm going to miss... Uh, oh, I can't remember what the other ones are. There's a few ones. Just the next two. Yeah, whatever the next two are, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll just... just uh, with the whole League of Ireland, since you've attended the games, have you seen... Like, do you feel like the standards getting better? Yeah, oh, yeah. So it seems time. to be a lot, yeah. of, a lot of players coming back over from England and they're, and they're coming back in. And, and, and just generally, just, the standard seems better. Those and the pitches do. aren't great. But there's nothing you can really no, do about that. The pitches aren't great. But you know, the League of Ireland has its own charm as well that you wouldn't see anywhere else. Grant, the pitches aren't great. Floodlights have a life of their own. You know, uh, and you have. <laughs> Things like that seem to happen. Anyone for a BJ gets read out and slightly like these things happen, and, and yeah. that kind of adds to the charm of it. But at the same time, you do have great players. Just Bowes again as an example, right? You missed the penalty, but Owen Stokes coming in from Leeds, yeah, he's all over the field. He's brilliant to watch. Yeah. He's magic to watch, you know. And then uh, and and as uh, you know, probably shouldn't say it, but some of those Shamrock Rovers players that were just like, you know, in their first half in Daly Mill Park were great, and in their blitzing of who was it they blitz they destroyed uh, Bray Bray like and you're looking at the uh, and, 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 um, Republic and, and you're kind of going there's, there's serious class football there so it's kind of not that surprising that the maybe in one of them that the gates are getting busier and yeah. busier of course, of course busier. Street, you know, dogs, well, some really fabulous players yeah 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 I was only listening and also after list, letting Shawnee McGuire who's now in the squad um, and we're dependent on him now to score us the goal so like, yeah 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 and then of course now the, the, I mean what a game uh, for the TV, Cork and Dundalk now this week. That's, yeah, like, yeah, that's a bit that, that. Like, can you honestly look at them and say that those are two extremely good quality teams? You couldn't, nobody could. So it's no wonder the gates are getting bigger and the people are copping on that League of Ireland is a brilliant spectacle. And a, and a really open spectacle. It's just no wonder. Like It just probably should have been. Where else would you get a chipper van inside the stadium? I know, yeah, <laughs> no, it's amazing. What a, like, what a celebration. <laughs> and all the memes going up afterwards then. Yeah, yeah. The running and says, I'm only after scoring, give us a card and chips and all of that stuff. And they put Colomini's face put into the chip van. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, just great. I actually met Tony O'Donoghue with that uh, <laughs> yeah. chip van, yeah. He was slagging me because I wouldn't buy chips. Yeah. Right. He was like, a chip is a chip. <laughs> Tony... I know you're watching. Yeah, no chip is a chip. You have to be more specific than that. <laughs> um, so, just in terms of uh, the young offenders now, today is Thursday, by the way, so... Yeah, it's so tonight. it's on tonight. Uh, the fifth one in Ireland is on tonight. It's the last one in England, if you're watching this in, in uh, Britain or whatever. Uh, and then we've one more one week left, and that's it. What so. time what is it? Half nine? Half nine on RT2, yeah. Half nine, RT2. Make sure you check it out. If you don't check it out, at nine, the half nine... Um, check it out on the RTE player because it is on 
straight after that, then, yeah it's it? on straight after or if you're watching this on the internet you probably have to wear it all to Robert off the BBC so you can do that as well he made the BBC <laughs> <laughs> BBC will never go and see me do it that doesn't matter do you? <laughs> don't go near his daughters either alright yeah. 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 PJ it's been an absolute pleasure no, no, thank, thank you, you very you much for Cheers, yeah. um, guys don't forget to give this video a thumbs up uh, as well as that don't forget to subscribe PJ's a subscriber aren't you I am, yeah. He is now. I know I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, check it out and uh, have a great day. Don't forget to check out the Young Offenders this evening. Thank Modern you very balls. much for watching. Hold me now. <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs>